There she is. Okay. There she is. Like, again, nothing ever happened. First try. First try. Welcome, guys. We had we had some audio issues. Yes. Uh, if we're peaking, sorry. I tried to fix it. The last couple of podcasts, there was like a little bit of peaking, and I didn't like it, so I tried to fix it. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, I made us too quiet. I'll have to do some mixing later. Yeah. Uh, I'll try not to yell. How about that? Uh, anyway, chat says it's good. I'm going to assume that it's good. We also okay. changed the lighting a little bit. Yes. I wanted to make it a little more moody. I didn't like how yes. bright it was. So, so. so a light might fall also. I don't have these permanent, these blue ones. I don't have them permanently affixed. But if they do fall, I hope it's the wide camera that catches it. Right. Because if it's your close up and it falls on my head, that's bad television. Right. Exactly. Anyway, hello. We're back. Yes. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I noticed that you're not decorated properly for today, so don't worry. I took care of it. What is today? Over. Is it uh, what is it's that? It's Prime Day, baby! Oh God, there he is! There he is! That's the there guy! All in celebration of Orion Pax, the, who ascended today to become Optimus Prime. Did you get anything? I have things in my cart. Uh, my wife bought <laughs> this because I'm because we're old and we own a house and have kids. She bought a Bissell. Uh, vacuum cleaner mop hybrid. Okay, that's kind of. It cool. was like it, like it it was like significantly reduced in price. It was down from like six hundred to two. Gotta say, on the Prime Day page, a lot of trash. Yeah, just garbage. Ooh, the one terabyte Nintendo official memory card, and you click on the page and it's not there. You know what? Fuck you, Amazon. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of things like sold out really fast. I will say, like Prime Day is usually generally a good day to get. Like expandable storage, like hard drives, SSDs, right. SD cards, and things I, like that. I did see an S, uh, Samsung uh, SSD that you can put on your PS5. Mm -hmm. uh, two terabytes of $100, which is yeah. very, very good. And I thought about it. The problem for me is that I just buy things when I need them. Yeah. And then I miss out on deals like this. Like, I don't need anything. So yeah. I don't want to buy it if I don't need it. It's not a good deal. If you don't need it or weren't going to buy it anyway. I will say they almost got me. They still might get me. Um, do you remember uh, in Obi-Wan Kenobi, the little droid uh, Leia carried around the flying droid Lola? Yes. So Hasbro made three versions of that because, of course, they did. The most expensive one is usually $100, but the prime deal was 20 Ooh, that's pretty good. Right. It's, it's out of stock right now, but if it comes back... I might have to get it. I'm lying. I did buy something. <laughs> uh, I bought a, a Thrill House suggested this to me, and it was on Prime Day deal, and I bought it last night. Okay. Uh, it's usually 35. I got it for like 20 something. I think 20. Hold on, let's see. 35 to 25. It's just an attachment for a Dremel. Uh, okay. it, it makes it thinner and easier to navigate. And I used it today, and it worked really well. Nice. It just goes on the on the front of it. Very nice. Uh, otherwise, I need uh, wire cutters because I broke mine by cutting a wire. It just oh. it just broke so in the half. So what supposed to do? That's Ace Hardware for you. <laughs> um, Should have gone to Home Depot. I, dude, Ace Hardware? Everything's a million dollars in Ace Hardware. Yeah, I don't... You go to Home Depot, everything's like... A normal price. Yes. Yeah, I don't I don't particularly like say Ace Hardware. No, I, I, it much. sucks. But, like, I mean, you don't want to support the big box stores no. all the time. Do, do they have so, wire cutters? So Jesus support Christ. Amazon. So support Amazon. Yeah, I'm going to get Amazon go. wire cutters. I need wire cutters. What else? Oh, there's other things that I need. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I wanted to briefly talk about, uh, on Twitch here, I've been uh, working on putting an Ambernick RG35XX into a DMG Game Boy. Yes. Uh, I have some updates. Okay. Today, I took a Dremel to the outside of this case. Okay. It looks like hell. <laughs> I did a horrible job. I can see like all the, the bad lines, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have a solution. I printed a border uh -huh. for the screen lens, and that is going to go right on top. Once I print the right one, because I printed it backwards. <laughs> but that'll work. And then uh, I, the little I printed a little housing for the screen, and this is almost perfect. I just need to... I want the buttons to move over a little bit. Right. But this fits... It fits good, I promise. There you go. Look at that. It fits perfect. 
There you go. Yay. Oh, and I also have to, there's like a little nub that's blocking. I got to print this one more time. I printed right. this like four times already. But yeah, we're making progress there. That should be cool. Uh, I'm not uploading a video this week because I want to work on that. So there you go. Uh, hey, Ace Hardware is a big box store. I know. <laughs> but, there, but it's not that big. But you know what? There's a bigger. Yeah. There's two bigger box stores. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's thank some people here. The Real Guyish. Thanks for the seven months. Love me some Bob butt cam. If you're not here for the live, you're missing out on that. <laughs> uh, Ohio Blitz. Thanks for the 14 months. Love you, Bob and Will. Y'all the best. Thanks, thank you. Dude. Chris BX with the 56 months. Chris BX makes the timestamps for Wolf Den podcast. Yes. Hasn't done it in a while. Uh -huh. Just gave me all of them for the last... However many you missed. He, yeah, all of them. <laughs> nice. Today. <laughs> So I gave I gave him access to the channel. I was like, you you put yeah. him up. I can't. I'm not going through those. Mo Billis, thanks for the five months. Truly a prime day moment. Yes. What if you see a good deal, drop it in the chat because yes. I want to know. Yes. What I, didn't I should be any, buying. I didn't see any video game deals that I liked, so that's disappointing. Again, it's usually storage stuff. Yeah, but I mean, like. I got my PS4 Prime Day. I got my Switch Prime Day. Like, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. So, saying you're, you're slacking on me here, Amazon. Anthony, I got my Xbox One on Prime Day. I got my all my video game systems on Prime Day. <laughs> Anthony Mielli, thanks for the subscription. Maybe the true Prime Day was the deal. Is the friends we made along the way? Okay. All right. <laughs> all right, man. I mean, obviously. Obviously. All right. Uh, we should probably talk about some news. You know yeah, what? I guess. There's so much. There's so much news to talk about. Yeah, somebody that's, so much. That's a lie. Yeah. There's there's, there's absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is a weird week. It was like there's just no news. Nothing like happened. Like today, two big uh news stories dropped, and we will talk about both of them. You know what? Pause the whole stream. Okay. RG three five XX sixty bucks on Amazon Prime Day. That's good. Sixty two dollars prime shipping. The prime shipping is what makes it a good deal. Yeah. You can get it from Amber Nick. Actually, it's the same price because I think you got to pay for shipping. So that's that's a good deal. Okay. I'm going to tweet that right now. You do that. Uh, first thing we got to talk about mm -hmm. today. I forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of emulators, uh, Video Game History Foundation did a report. And this is not a surprise to me. I'm surprised that the number is as high as it is. Okay. You know, like I expected, like I expected to be like bad news. I think of uh, the number they gave is very bad news. <laughs> yes. It, this is bad. Yes. This is bad news. But I mean, it, it's, it, I, it's kind of, I think it's obvious. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, it's, I guess it's easy to lose perspective. Let's tell people what we're talking about. We're talking about a uh, video game history foundation did a report and it turns out 87% of retro games are currently unavailable. Yes. Unless you pirate them. Yes. And, uh, and I feel like that's obvious, but it's easy to lose perspective because yeah. we see companies like Nintendo and Capcom and Konami and Sega and, and Sega yeah. posting all of their, like making their yeah. games right. available yes. as, uh, to an extent. Yeah. And we poo-poo them a lot because yeah. either the emulation's not perfect. Yeah, they do like, you know, Nintendo, you have to be subscribed to a service to use them. Uh, Sega will just re-release the same Sonic games over and over again mm -hmm. at, at the expense of their other games. Um, so it's not perfect, but at least they're trying. Yeah, but we lose perspective on just how many other types of games there are. Mm -hmm. uh, and turns out, 87% yes. of those old games are on uh, Per Eurogamer, a new study conducted by the Video Game History Foundation and Software Preservation Network has revealed that 87% of classic games released in the U.S. are out of print. The remaining 13% can uh, be easily accessed, whether it's through a re-release on modern platforms or through an officially provided emulation service, but the majority of older games remain unavailable through easy means. The study was produced in order to substantiate the amount of video game history in danger of being lost, the Video Game History Foundation said, and provided and pro and provided evidence on why libraries and archives should be allowed to preserve games in a way similar to other media forms, such as books and films. 
The study included over 4,000 games released before 2010, uh, including every Game Boy title released in the U.S. The foundation explained its methodology in full detail in a blog post alongside the results. By comparison, around 14% of American silent films between 1912 and 1929 still survive today, compared to a 13% of games from the 80s up until 2010. The closure of the 3DS and Wii U eShops in March removed more than half of the Game Boy titles still in print at the time, leaving only 5.87% available today according to the study. 6% of the Game Boy's library is available. Game right Boy. Now. Yes. That's tragic. I, I think one particular thing about the Game Boy is that there's a lot of weird third party and like off off brand stuff yeah like you can say that about every system mm -hmm. honestly but the fact that you know the number is so low i i think on the game boy there's just uh, it was a lot of licensed stuff and i i i think they got lost quicker how yeah. do i put this like like they're not as well, big of a deal as the games on like SNES and like Genesis. Well, yeah, portable gaming for the longest time was seen as like a secondary market, a cheaper yeah. market. Yeah. So it was a lot easier for companies to put out like shovelware onto those right. systems. So yeah, there's a lot of garbage, but that just may met when there was something good, it rose to the top and was more prominent. But there are still a lot of games from those eras that you can't you can't just you can't just play right now. Yeah, like Pocket Bomber, man. Can you get that? I don't think so. You can't get X the game from the people who went on to make uh star fox the first game true can't get that yeah i don't think there's a way to get pocket bomberman at all yeah and like we know now uh uh the pokemon games yes on the most popular game boy games completely unavailable yes uh as digital distribution continues to dominate sales of and access to games the video game history foundation warned the preservation of games is in danger of getting worse due to volatile nature of digital stores and services a recent but small scale example of this is google stadia when the platform went offline at the beginning of the year three exclusives were completely lost we should be thinking ahead to the infrastructure needed to address the problems of the present and the future uh video game history foundation wrote on twitter uh, access to video game history shouldn't have to be reserved only for the most dedicated and in the know fans. Uh, the foundation also acknowledged piracy's current position as one of the most common ways of accessing classic games. On Twitter, the Video Game History Foundation co-directors Casey Lewin and Frank Cifaldi called on the industry and legislation to make reforms which will allow for better preservation of games echoing the statements made by the foundation itself. The full paper is available to read online at Zendo. Yeah, so I, I, uh, maybe I'll just read Frank Cifaldi's thread here because okay. I think that it brings some more important perspective. Because a lot of people who watch this, you know, you can just pirate these games, yeah. and they're easy for us to get. Yeah, you, it, you just Google the name of the game you want, ROM, and then yeah. it just comes right up. Uh, but that's not. I don't think that that's available to everybody. No, like like. Uh, some of our friends will will try to ask us how they should play a game. Yeah, and it's hard. It's it because we know that you download a ROM. We know how to navigate the sketchy websites, and we know how to run the ROM. We yes. know how to get an emulator and do all of that stuff. Explaining all of those steps to somebody over text message or something yeah. is not well, even fun like, or easy, and it and it puts them off of wanting to do it. I was with my friends this weekend, and I brought my analog pocket with me, and I was playing Metroid Zero Mission, and I was playing a ROM of it because you can't get Zero Mission very easily right now, mm -hmm. and I was explaining to my one non-gamer friend how this works. You know, I had to explain to him the difference between an emulator and a ROM. I had to explain to him what the pocket was. I had to explain to him like what I had to do to the pocket mm -hmm. to to be able to play a ROM. Yeah, you know, it's all these things that like a lay person doesn't just want to do. There's a learning curve. Yeah, and, and it seems easy because we've done it a bunch, yeah. and it is easy once you follow the steps. But it's a lot of steps that could put somebody off. Yes, and it'd be a lot easier if you could just be like, oh. They're available on... Go on Switch Online yeah. and download this. Yes. Yeah. 
So Frank Cifaldi has a Twitter thread. He says nine out of 10 classic video games are no longer available to consumers and the number is unlikely to get any better. It's practically guaranteed that something you grew up with is gone forever. Most of us in the community knew it was this bad, but it wasn't until we conducted the world's first study on game availability that we could put a number on it, 87%. You can no longer buy 87% of video games sold in the US prior to 2010. There are two paths to playing most classic games. Number one, maintain antique hardware and expensive secondhand software, which is now we know is the problem that they're expensive. Yes. They weren't, it wasn't that way forever. Yeah. Just like the past like five years, the, the numbers have skyrocketed. Yeah. Uh, number two is piracy. Yeah. Which is illegal. Which is, you know, that's up. That's a do at your own risk. This means we are forever gatekeeping video game history. It's only for collectors and for those with software literacy. They can't inspire new players. If your response to this is just emulate them, then I need you to consider what your priorities are. I want the next generation to have easy access to the past. Ask any parent right now if their kid knows how to install desktop executables or knows what a torrent is. Those of us already in the know are set for life. My ROMs are never going away, but I love video game history and I want to be I want it to be for everyone, not just the software literate nerds. I want to see old games inspiring the weird artists of the future. And that's what we're trying to say is, yeah. is that like if I if you're playing Metroid uh Zero Mission mm -hmm. and somebody wants to give it a shot you should be able to be like, hey, yeah, yeah, this is this is how you get it. Yeah, you just in go one here and, step. Yeah, yeah, and you just get it. Which I I think that this gives me a different perspective on Switch Online and and the Sega Classics and and yeah. and those collections and stuff because we always shit on a lot of these collections because maybe the emulation isn't that great or. Uh, there's some games missing that we wish were there. Yeah. Uh, but they're part of the 13% of games yeah. that that have been made available. Yes. Switch, this puts into perspective just how valuable Switch Online has, has been. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's not a lot of games in the grand scheme of things, but it's some of the most important ones. Right. And making them available in any way is very valuable. And... The emulation's pretty great on Switch Online. The N64 emulation got a lot of crap, yeah. but it was still pretty good. But by the same token, you'll also have situations where a company will try to remake the game or emulate the game, and they do a bad job of it. Right. Uh, there's the Silent Hill collection from the 360 PS3 era, which was notoriously bad. Um, so you can't always count on, you know, you can't always count on the companies to do a good job because historically they've shown that they don't really care about their library. They don't see the value in it as much as they do the newer stuff because they don't make as much money on the old stuff as they do the new stuff. Right. I think that there, there's definitely a conversation to be had about uh, remastering versus just porting the game or releasing it as it was. Mm -hmm. Cause I mostly just want to play these games as they are. Yeah. And if you're gonna give it to me, I'd rather it be a complete remake. Either give me how it was or remake it entirely. Yeah, I'm trying to find, because Kelsey Lewin said something to the effect of when a game is remade and the original isn't re-released alongside it, then it's like the original was never released at all. Yeah. You know, because like, uh, I'll use Silent Hill again. Looper Team is remaking Silent Hill 2, but the original Silent Hill is currently unavailable anywhere. I don't I don't even think it's on Steam right now. So it's almost as if like the original Silent Hill 2 just doesn't exist. If the remake is the only thing that's going to be there cuz it's going to be a different game. Yeah. So it, it's not the same thing. Yeah, uh Super Mario RPG yeah. is another example. They're yeah. completely remaking it yeah. and uh I mean it's like a somewhere between a remaster and a remake, but it seems mostly like a remake. They're, yeah. they're changing way too much about it. Um yeah, I want the original. I want to. I want to be able to preserve the original how it was. Yeah. Um. So I don't want to let them get away with that, but they could also just not release it at all and make it completely unavailable, like a lot of these other companies have done right. already. So I don't want to take uh, credit away from 
these companies that are doing something at least they're doing something but you know more could always be done mm -hmm. you know and i you, you look at how i mean i hate comparing the video game industry to the film industry but it's really like the closest one-to-one -one that there is mm -hmm. in terms of like what the media is how the business aspect of it affects the art aspect of it and things like that um yeah like we said 12 percent of silent movies exist at oh. all yeah like the majority of like silent movies made in the early days are just gone like a, some of alfred hitchcock's earliest films just don't exist anymore that's how bad film preservation was in the beginning i they caught it early enough so that you know the best films of like the 1920s and 30s onward survive and like even like the really bad films survive but all we have of the beginning is like a handful of silent movies we don't have like all of them we yeah. could be missing the best silent movie of all time because it just doesn't exist. Somebody tweeted at Kevin Kenson actually and said, I don't see why game producers should be responsible or even care about this. If a company stops printing a game, it falls on the community to preserve it just like with movies. And then Kevin said, I mean, I'm not a fan of that happening in the movies either. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at, I mean, that's also a dicey topic because it used to be they would do a decent enough job of just having the films available. Like, I said this you know, to our mom the other day. If she wanted to watch The Godfather, she has the Blu-ray of it. She can go on iTunes and download it. It's streaming on Paramount. It's at the library. You know, there are ways to watch The Godfather. If she wanted to play Cyborg Justice... <laughs> we Too have, bad. We would have to bust out our Sega Genesis, plug it into a TV... Make sure it works, because not all TVs can handle 240p signal. Uh, blow on the cartridge 20 times and pray that it still works. So somebody in the chat, uh, friend Nard, says, what if the original had problematic stuff? Here's what you do. You do what Warner Brothers did. Yes. Th they put a disclaimer right at the front. The cartoons you're about to see are a product of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that were com commonplace in American society. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. While the following does not represent the Warner Brothers' view of today's society, these cartoons are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming these prejudices never existed. That would just go on the front of Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> yes. You can't just ignore that that should happen. Exactly. Because you know? like, that, like the, the warning said, that's just as bad as pretending it never happened at all. Yeah, and it did. Yeah. That those things happened. So I think that there's nothing wrong with uh, porting stuff over, if, especially if they, we, we want to view these things as they were in history. Art is, art is a time capsule of the moment it was released in. Mm -hmm. That's what's important to remember. So, yeah, the 90s had a lot of like extreme, you know, edgy stuff in it because that's what the 90s was. If you wanted to, t uh, to know what it was like to live in the 90s, a game play, play gex yeah play gex <laughs> like a, a modern gex would be the most boring thing ever yeah gex uh, there's a i think he there's a part where he's just doing a racist chinese accent yeah i think pretending to be jackie chan or yeah. something so that you're gonna need a disclaimer like this over gex yeah you know um so yeah i uh, again, this gives me a new perspective on uh, how Nintendo Switch Online has been, even though I haven't been happy with it. I'm kind of just counting my blessings with what we've gotten. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes me think like a lot of people are saying they want these retro games on Steam. And yeah. it's like, all right, that'd be great. But, you know, uh, you can't count on all of them to want to put it in one spot. I mean, but that there should be something there should be something that like some sort of collection of all of these games to be in one spot maybe not steam but something so even if it's a subscription service uh in television right in television used to be owned by mattel uh what happened was the people who worked on intel the television back in the 80s when mattel shut that division down they pulled money together and bought the rights to the intellivision name and all the first party games that Mattel made for Intellivision. And up until like 2017 or whatever, uh, they would do that just that. They would release collections of Intellivision games. 
But all the first party in television games, they would just re-release them on like PS2, Xbox 360, Steam, and all that. So people had access to those games. Now, in television games weren't the greatest games in the world, but like they were there. Mm-hmm. You could play them and they were all reasonably pr- priced. What happened was, uh, I think I believe his name was Keith Robinson, like the leader of the project. When he passed away, Tommy Tellerico bought the rights to Intellivision <laughs> oh, no. and th- then com- uh, shut all those down and tried to fart out the Intellivision Amico that is never coming out. And that project was so badly managed that in order to like save the company, the new like CEO or whatever, is selling off games in the Intellivision library piecemeal to other companies just to stay afloat. The Intellivision library like individually is worth nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about those games. But as a collection together, then you have something. So because some idiot like had this idea of rebooting Intellivision and doing it poorly, he basically destroyed an entire segment of game history. So now, if somebody wants to go play a game from the Intellivision, there is no way to do it unless you can track down one of those retro collections for another system that isn't supported anymore. There's got to be a lot of other bureaucratic stuff similar to that that's gone on behind the scenes that has ruined other Absolutely. franchises and, mm-hmm. and, and gotten all of this stuff lost to time. I, I think a lot of companies that maybe didn't go under but greatly... Uh, 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 shed all of their like people uh uh i think a lot of those companies uh uh, got so small and then all they did was sell off all of their assets and and they spent a long time trying to figure out how to sell these licenses to these games and then they either got bought for nothing and then just buried yeah or never got bought at all there's a lot of like also to like mergers and acquisitions that happen like a company gets bought by one or like half of it was sold to another. There's a, um, there's a game for the PC called no one lives forever. And it had a sequel and a spinoff and they were considered like some of the best PC games of all time. Like when they were originally released, they got great reviews. Like they sold very well. The rights to that game is owned between like Activision and Disney and Warner brothers. And trying to get all night dive studio actually tried to do this. They actually tried to get all three together to hash out the rights to re-release the game and Warner Brothers eventually said stop we're not interested in doing this please stop all (laughs) communication to us and like that's a problem because I never played No One Lives Forever I've heard it's incredible I have a PS2 port that sucks I want to play the good version of it yeah it would take a lot for somebody to build a platform to put all of this stuff in one place. Mm-hmm. I guess the Video Game History Foundation is kind of working on something similar to that, but I don't know how they would make it available to That's the, the problem. Like they have yeah. all this stuff. They ha- like as of right now, if you wanted to play a game in the Video uh, Game History Foundation's library, you have to go to them. Mm-hmm. You have to physically get your ass up and go to them. You know, we talk about yeah, we, we've talked about it before, and you've talked to him personally when the completionist bought all the Wii U and 3DS games. He gave that to the Video Game History Foundation, but you'd have to go there. In yeah, order they to don't know games. what they want to do with it. Yeah. Um, there's potential there for them to build a platform similar to like a library, uh, yeah. but there's a lot of legal issues with that because they don't currently see games like books and movies. Yeah. 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 There's also like a lot of, te- there's a lot of technical limitations to it, you know? Cause like, if you want to play dragon warrior, the original dragon warrior, you need an NES. Yeah. You have to find a way to get an NES, you know, hooked up to a TV and make sure the cartridge works and make sure the system works and try to figure out how to play it. They, they need a way for you to get a subscription to like the mystery video game history foundation. Yeah. And then you go on their website and then they have like an in game, you know, emulator yeah and then you play through that yeah that would be sick that would be great but yes there's a lot of legal issues with yes that. Uh, uh mr newton muscat in the chat said uh good old games gog.com is kind of such a platform they are like there there are places where you can get like retro games and like older obscure games but it's it's smaller and it's limited compared to like a more widespread approach approach the way like movies and books have 
You know, mm-hmm. I can pull out my phone, pull out Spotify, and listen to any song I want. I can't do that with video games. You know, yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. So here. why is it different with music? Is it because the, the music companies uh, bought up all of the older music companies and just <sighs> kept their stuff available? Well, and, think, and when they moved over to Apple Music and Spotify, they sold their entire libraries. I think I think one thing it's technologically easier with music because it's just an audio file. And you're yeah. not dealing with video and you're not dealing with you know motion graphics and things like that. I think. Well, I think, you know, Napster and the whole, like, you know, pir- you know, piracy revolution of the early 2000s, like, showed them, like, something needed to be done. And then iTunes was the first one to show them, like, well, all right, well, this is how you do it. You sell, you use a digital store and you sell your songs for a dollar each and you sell an album for 10 and it just goes right to the person's computer and that's it. And like it took a long time. Led Zeppelin was not on iTunes for the longest time. ACDC was not on iTunes for the longest time. Like there, were, Garth Brooks didn't come on iTunes to like a couple of years ago. And you you laugh, but like Garth Brooks, a big deal in certain parts of this country. <laughs> he is. Um, but yeah, it still took a long time to like to convince the industry that this was the way to go. It took a long time for movies too. Like when Netflix started doing it, like it, they didn't have a big streaming library, and then they got a big streaming library, and then all the movie studios are like well, we can do this. And then they did. And now they're having financial problems themselves. I saw something the other day. Disney Plus took off uh, a movie called Crater. They released the movie called Crater on Disney Plus. And then seven weeks after it was released, they took it down. Mm -hmm. And I saw a tweet. I can't remember who had said it, but they said, this is how you lose access to cult classics. The next generation of movie fans are not going to know what it's like to randomly find a movie that didn't do well upon release and have it become their favorite movie. And that's true of a lot of films. Fight Club was not a success when it was originally released. Blade Runner was not popular when it was originally released. And those are films that like are considered milestones of like their time and place. Yeah. So it, that, it's like even more so true in video games. You know, it you, there could be a game right now that like, doesn't do well and that gets pulled from the store but that could be somebody's favorite game in like five ten years and we'll never know because like every few years there has to be a culling yeah lost texas china is doing their part with all those ten thousand plus game consoles that they're making yeah at least they're trying That's the thing is that yeah. emulation is really the only saving grace mm-hmm. here and and uh it shouldn't really be that way like yeah i'm fine with emulating stuff because I mean, it's convenient for me because I know how to do it and it's free. Yeah. And free is great. Yeah. But I'd much rather give them the money. Yeah. If they may, if they make it easy for me to get all the stuff, like I have Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. I like Nintendo Switch Online. I use it all the time. It's good. I have the Sega Genesis collection on the Switch. I got the Mega Man collection. They're all great. Yeah. I love all those games. I also have them on all of my emulators yeah because that's also very easy yeah uh, along with all the other stuff that they haven't made available like pocket Bomberman, like sonic advance all of those yeah. games are unavailable yeah um but i'd much rather them be available because then i don't have to go th- through sketchy websites to get them they're easier to tell friends how to get them yeah uh and i don't like doing illegal things yeah it's just you know sometimes you got to do it yeah I don't mind doing it, but I don't like it. You got to do what you got to do, but like that doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, like uh I always say that emulating game or or pirating content that isn't easily available is morally neutral. Yes. Some people say it's good. I don't know. You're not putting anything good into the world. Right. You're just it's just neutral because you're not hurting anybody because they didn't make it fucking available. Yeah. So, I'll just keep pirating. I'll just keep doing it, and so but, will you. But it is morally right to pirate Metallica albums. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree with that. Yes. I'll agree with that. Steal from them. Yes, always steal from them. Uh, okay. The Chip Bag, thanks for the prime. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, there's another interesting uh, conversation about... Um, pirating arcade games okay because like 
those were created for you to go play them and spend money at the arcade to do that. Right. So, but like, they're also like prohibitively expensive. Like if you wanted one, like in your house, yeah. it's like 10 grand and up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what do you think about like pirating like Time Crisis 4? Which is available if you go to like Dave and Buster's. So, to me, a video game is a video game is a video game. Mm-hmm. So, if if I wanted to play, let's say Time Crisis Four, you keep talking while I fix this knocking that's happening. If I wanted to play Time Crisis Four and it was not readily available to me, but I had the ability to play it in my home, meaning I had a, a fast enough computer with a light gun. And it's like a good screen that I would look that I would look into playing it. Into That's Time game. Crisis Two was on PS2. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so it was like uh, House of the Dead. Yeah, a lot of arcade. Yeah, games. like yeah, had, you know, Street Fighter Two is always on, going to be on console. More combat, not not so much more combat anymore. But like, yeah, arcade games are occasionally made available on home console. Yes, there are some arcade games that are not available on home console. And to me, if you you know, if you were going to pirate them the way you would pirate, like, Super Mario RPG, then, yeah, I, I, it falls along the same lines. Okay. There, there are some of, like, the the weirder games, like Super Hang-On or Cruising USA, where, like, those have special cabinets and, like, the, the cabinet is part of the experience. That might be a little tricky because you're not getting the same thing. But, yeah, I mean, pirating arcade games is always an issue with the control layout and the control and layout and like yeah because like you know super hang on you're riding on a motorcycle and like yeah. you can't like you're not gonna have a motorcycle set up in your house i have this one game that's about walking a dog and you're on a treadmill yeah and you have to keep up with the dog mm. and if you don't the dog starts to choke <laughs> and i don't have a treadmill right so the dog's just choking the whole time because <laughs> you're not moving and he's yeah. trying to go so uh you can't play that game yeah. You can have the ROM, but you can't play it. Unless you just want to choke a dog. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it. I guess that's that's it for the Video Game History Foundation study on uh, how there's no games anymore. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, it. Pack it's, it in. it's Fortnite's and uh, Overwatch's until the end of time. This is somewhat related, though. I wanted to immediately talk about how you can pirate games on Xbox again. Hooray! <laughs> Uh, Xbox consoles can once again run emulators in retail mode. Uh, Previously, users were able to download applications directly from the Microsoft Store, which allowed them to use emulated material on any retail Xbox console. Earlier this year, Microsoft reportedly disabled the loophole that would let these applications run on the retail mode of the system. Users could still run the application in developer mode. But now a group named uh, UWePon's Store has found another way to get these applications running on the retail unit. Uh, While the group isn't making the exact method publicly known due to fears that Microsoft will also close this loophole, users looking to access, users looking to get access to this new method can pay the group on Patreon. The group is asking for $2 or two pounds a month uh, for access to the new method. It is currently unclear if Microsoft will act on this information, however. According to a new video from uh, Modern Vintage Gamer, the method is currently working as intended at the time of publication. Uh, browser-based emulators such as Nintendo 64, PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and DOS and Amiga and more were made accessible in late 2021 thanks to an update to Microsoft Edge. Due to the performance limits of browser-based offerings, full hardware-based software uh, remains the best way to run emulators on Xbox consoles, including those for PS2, GameCube, Wii, and Dreamcast. Developer mode can be accessed with for a $20 fee and lets users install developer builds of software that utilizes universal Windows platform. Wait. What? This is... Oh, in retail mode. Okay. Yeah. Why did they throw the developer mode at the end? What was the purpose of them? To let you know that... Because people often don't know that there are two modes of your Xbox, retail mode and developer mode. I know, but like it seemed like a weird place to put that. They should have explained that in the beginning of the article. I thought they did. That that it was all previously available. Well, I guess because they're saying if they close this loophole. If they close this this, loophole. If they close this loophole. Right, right. Then you can still access developer mode for only 20 bucks. Right, I understand. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because I have the developer mm-hmm. mode, and that's how I have my emulators on on my Xbox. But it's it's like a I I had to re get into it the other day, and it was uh-huh. kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass yeah. to get to re get in to get into developer mode and have all my stuff there because I think developer mode it's really easy to wipe everything that's there yeah. to just because it's meant for you know development builds, mm-hmm. uh, so it's not meant for a permanent solution. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just like wiped all my ROMs. Like I don't know, I don't know what happened. But uh, now you can access it through retail mode again, which is just the mode that you have on your yeah, Xbox. It's the default, default one. It's just how it is. I'm conflicted about uh, emulation uh, uh, developers charging through Patreon and stuff because on one hand, they did work. They should benefit from the work that they did and yeah. you should support them. But this is how things get shut down yeah. and how people get this, sued. This is where things get dicey. Because uh, now you're directly profiting off of somebody else's work. Mm-hmm. So uh, them charging $2, two dollars is nothing. Yeah. Them charging $2 for access to this is a way for them to block certain people from seeing the work that they've yeah. done like microsoft mm-hmm. uh chances are lower not zero but lower that somebody like microsoft somebody at microsoft is going to pay two dollars to see what they're doing and then right. file a lawsuit um but at the same time now they could say look you're profiting off of it now we're going to sue you more right so it's a little bit of a double-edged sword mm-hmm. i'm not sure how i feel about that yeah. I'm sure it's fine and works great. Uh, I, again, have the developer mode, so I'm just going to use that, I guess. I bet you this is a lot easier. My, the way that this oh, is. Yeah, because it's a, it's a loophole uh, to a previous loophole that was closed. Right. So I'd imagine it's not as easy as just going into developer mode. Although developer mode is purposely hard because it's for developers. Yeah, well, when I first did developer mode, the mm-hmm. developer mode thing, it was I remember feeling like it was pretty easy, uh-huh. but when I went back into it to mess around, I was very frustrated. Right. So I guess it was because I had already done most of it and needed to change one or two little things. Yeah. And that like broke me a little bit. Yeah. That like fucked some things up. So I wouldn't say it's, you know, the easiest way to play retro games. Yeah. It's a pretty good GameCube emulator. Right. And PS2 emulator. But for the most part, I'd say if you're looking for an emulation machine, I'll, I'll get a, something that's not an Xbox. You yeah. could just... How about a computer? Yeah, there you go. I still think the best emulator you can get is a computer. Most, you know, cheap computers will play up to a GameCube. Yeah, at least. Even a Mac. Macs have yeah. great emulation now. O- OpenEMU hasn't been updated in like a billion years, but it's still amazing. Yeah. And I think they have MU Deck now on Mac and and well no they have MU Deck is coming out on Windows and it's gonna be sick okay. but I haven't messed around with it yet. Uh, Jim Blitz says it's like I don't want to pirate I'd rather own the game but they don't give the option at all when it comes to a lot of games that's what we're talking yeah, about yeah that's exactly it. All right maybe now we're actually done with uh, talking about piracy yeah I'm never pirating again. Oh. Uh... OpenEMU does have GameCube on it. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Really? Yeah. Right here. Core provided by Dolphin. Oh. Well, yeah. I have Dolphin on Mac. I didn't know right. OpenEMU had Dolphin. Uh, now it does. Oh. Yeah. I just opened it randomly and it says, yeah, GameCube. Let's, you know what? Let's see. <laughs> I got it open right now. Where's GameCube? GameCube's right here. I got to put my ROMs in there. Coming. Ooh, homebrews. Homebrew. What Ooh, comes the, with homebrews? Yeah, I'm on like I'm using the latest version. In the top panel it says like library, safe states, screenshots, and homebrews. Smash Brothers Melee. Let's go. Melee. Melee. What about Wii? They've got to have Wii if they've got a GameCube. I don't see Wii. I just see. That's really bizarre because it's the same core. Yeah. Oh, my Dropbox does this cool thing now where it saves everything to the cloud. Yeah. So I have to re-download Smash Brothers from my uh, Dropbox. 
it'll be done in a second. Okay. You can even pick a tiny case for a PC if you want something that looks cool. Like, make it look like an SNES or something? Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm booting up Melee. Warning. Dolphin Core has compatibility issues. Okay. Okay. Dismissed. Dolphin Core quit unexpectedly. All right. Well, that go there goes there that. Go. There we go. And uh, there, there it is. <laughs> I do have Dolphin on here. I could just run it through Dolphin. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to everybody's favorite topic here on the Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. Yours and mine. Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard. It might. Hey, this might be the end. Yeah. We could be crossing the finish line because Microsoft wins the FTC fight to buy Activision and Blizzard. A California judge is allowing Microsoft to close its acquisition of Activision Blizzard after five days of grueling testimony. Microsoft will face an ongoing antitrust case by the Federal Trade Commission, but Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley has listened to arguments from both the FTC and Microsoft and decided to deny the regulator's request for a preliminary injunction. In a ruling submitted today, Judge Corley said the following. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision has been described as the largest in tech history. It deserves scrutiny. That scrutiny has paid off. Microsoft has committed in writing, in public, and in court to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years on parity with Xbox. It made an, arra- it made an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Switch. And it entered several agreements to... Uh, it, 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 bleh, 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 bleh. There was, uh, I think there's a grammatical error in there. And it, it okay, me. it broke you. Yeah. Uh, and it entered several agreements to, for the first time, bring Activision's content to several cloud gaming services. This court's responsibility in this case is narrow. It is this. It is to decide if, notwithstanding these current circumstances, the merger should be halted, perhaps even terminated, pending resolution of the FTC administration action. Um, For the reasons explained, the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood it will prevail on its claim this particular vertical merger in this specific industry may substantially lessen competition. To the contrary, the, the record evidence points to more consumer access to Call of Duty and other Activision content. The motion for a preliminary injunction is therefore denied. So that's part of what we were talking about early on in this was we could see them allowing the merger to happen yeah. with some asterisks. Yes. One of the big asterisks being make Call of Duty available to other platforms yes. because that's the big competition issue. Yeah. I mean, that's the big issue that PlayStation brought up and it's the biggest issue that people who aren't in the know about video games are going to know because they know call of duty right, they all right. oh, call of duty that's that big one yeah you can't hide call of duty you can't mm-hmm. take that it's the big game so this makes a lot of sense it's only for 10 years uh with playstation to, to to put call of duty on playstation i think i remember them saying that that is enough time for playstation to make their own call of duty theoretically yes However, as I've said before, you can't just make a Call of Duty. No, yeah. You know, Killzone, for those of you who remember, was positioned as Sony's Halo killer back in the PS2. Guess what it did not do? <laughs> Halo did that on its own. hey Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so theoretically, yeah, they could make not a Call of Duty killer, but like a Call of Duty comparable game. Like Battlefield, if it was good. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely room for something to come around and take the place of Call of Duty because Call of Duty has been pretty shit in the last couple yeah. of years. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Warzone was so good. Mm-hmm. But now it is so bad. Right, because they Call of Duty did. Because they Call of Duty did. Uh, so there is plenty of room for, for another game to come out and be just as big. And it could be a playstation game playstation could come out and make something that's yeah. just as big and then everybody's gonna be like why does playstation get that and not microsoft you right know? so whatever is there more to this article you want to read uh f- i'm trying to see like what the main points are uh judge corley has clearly sided with microsoft uh despite the ftc's challenging uh microsoft's cloud agreements corley uh took them 
into consideration in her discussion. The court ruling even ad- agrees with N- uh, Microsoft's in theory about the Switch being part of the console market, but also accepts the FTC can reasonably claim it's not. Uh, Judge Corley has also agreed with the FTC that the console market does not include PCs. Um, oh, God. I mean, I guess not. Like I, PC gamers don't consider it a console. That's for damn sure. I get it, but also at the same time, this gives Microsoft uh, like an unfair advantage, in in my opinion. What do you mean? Because it's PC markets Microsoft. So like you're just ignoring the whole section that they already own of gaming. <sighs> to a point. I don't even necessarily know if Microsoft ever sees... I mean, obviously, Microsoft sees the value of gaming on Windows. Yeah. But I think a majority of their focus has always been on, you know, office management stuff and home stuff. You know, not necessarily the games itself. Mm -hmm. You know, they do put more focus on gaming than uh, Apple does or the Linux Collective does, obviously. But, you know, I, I do still think gaming is just a... A uh, small subsection of the overall Microsoft empire, as opposed to like, you know, Windows in general. Right. You know, I mean, I get it, and like PlayStation gets it because yeah. they put their games on PC now, mm-hmm. and maybe not initially, but it takes like maybe six to twelve months, and then they put their game on PC. Um, but they put it on Steam. Yeah. So uh, they try to make sure that Microsoft doesn't make too much money mm-hmm. from them. And that's probably where the judge is getting the idea that PC well, is not included. Microsoft doesn't take a cut when you put a game on Windows. On uh, no, they but on the micro you have to be on the Microsoft Store. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. so just because it's on Windows doesn't mean that's that's why I'm saying when PlayStation releases their game, they put it on Steam, right? Because Windows isn't getting a cut of the Steam sale, but you need Windows right. to run the game. But so they already. You bought Windows. You have the the platform. But Microsoft required. isn't getting any more money from the sale of a Sony game if it's yes. released on Steam. Yes. I feel like that's the key issue here. It is, but again, you bought the system. Right. The system is Windows, and you needed that in order to play it. Which is why PlayStation is waiting six to twelve months to release their games on Windows after well, they release it on on PlayStation. I mean, you have Proton, which is Valve's. Uh, Linux-based OS for gaming. Mm -hmm. You have Apple now with the M2 Max uh, and their slow but steady push towards gaming. Mm -hmm. You know, Kojima has a game on Mac, so it must be worth something. (laughs) You know, you you are now starting to see other the other operating systems slowly but surely inch more towards a gaming future. So maybe we'll see Sony games on Mac. Now. That would be great. That would be crazy yeah. if, if Sony entered a deal with Apple. Yeah, because we well we that's possible because they got rid of the Xbox controllers in the Apple stores and they put in uh, yeah. PlayStation controllers. Yeah, so so you be, could be playing Spider Man too on your MacBook. It's possible. Yeah. That would be awesome mm-hmm. if that happened. Because, yeah, now they have that whole uh, developer thing where you yeah. can easily port games over to the metal architecture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I hear it works, for the most part, pretty great. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to do yourself if you wanted to do it. I haven't tried it myself. But it, it, it makes things seem like they're moving in a good direction for, for Apple gaming. Yeah. Uh, the anyway. judge... The judge's ruling now allows Microsoft to close its Activision Blizzard deal ahead of its July 18th deadline, but only if the company is willing to close around the UK or if the Competition and Market Authority, the CMA, is willing to negotiate some form of remedy. The UK regulator moved to block Microsoft's proposed acquisition in April, and Microsoft is currently appealing the decision with hearing uh, with a hearing set to start on July 28th. We're going to see some weird stuff where, like, in the UK, they're gonna call. They're gonna like publish Activision games separately, and it'll be called yeah. like Activision UK. Or I forgot something. there'll it'll be a separate subsidiary. I, for, I was reading somewhere like what Microsoft could possibly do mm-hmm. if the UK is the only place that doesn't approve this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you see it like a lot of companies they'll call themselves something else in other countries. Yeah. Uh, it's possible that 
they just don't release the games in the UK. It's, it's possible that they shut down the UK offices of Activision Blizzard so that there's no UK representation there. So like the the laws aren't as strict on them over there. There's a lot of ways they could skirt the issue. They could have EA publish the games over there. Yeah, that that is also that's a thing, a thing yeah. that we've seen before. Yeah, Square Enix publishes Call of Duty in Japan. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so th- them being blocked in the UK is not an end all be all. Yeah. Phil Spencer tweeted some stuff. Let's read what Phil Spencer mm. had to say. We're grateful to the court for swiftly deciding in our favor. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. The evidence showed the Activision Blizzard deal is good for the industry. Okay. Calm down. I would listen, I was on Microsoft's side. <laughs> you're 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 doing too much. The evidence showed that Activision Blizzard deal is good for the industry, and the FTC's claims about console switching, multi-game subscription services, and cloud don't reflect the realities of the gaming market. Okay. Since we first announced this deal, our commitment to bringing more games to more people on more devices has already grown. We've signed multiple agreements to make Activision Blizzard games, Xbox, first-party games, and Game Pass all available to more players than they are today. We know that players around the world have been watching this case closely, and I'm proud of our efforts to expand player access and choice throughout this journey. End. And you just put end. All right. So if you really are committed to all of this, put Game Pass games on Linux. Yeah. I want it on my Steam Deck, start, start but native doing that. on the Steam Deck. Yeah. They have... I want to give them credit for having a way to stream Game Pass games on a Steam Deck through mm-hmm. Steam. And they have a tutorial on how to do it. It is a nightmare. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass to get it to work. But they do have a tutorial, an official Microsoft tutorial on yeah. how to do it. They so. do know it's through streaming. I want it. I want to play Forza or Halo on my Steam Deck. I want to download it onto the Steam Deck. Yeah, and I want it through Game Pass. I don't want to have to buy it again on Steam. Uh, I like how the first comment is: "This is a big day for people who want Tony Hawk's Pro Skater three and 4. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Good man. Uh, I will note uh, later in the article, it says uh, that both the CMA and Microsoft have agreed to pause their legal battle in the UK to negotiate how the Activision Blizzard deal could be modified to address the CMA's cloud gaming concerns. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was the big thing. That was the big with, thing with the last UK. week yeah. or two weeks ago. Well, however many weeks ago it was. Yeah. The UK was concerned how this would affect cloud gaming. And we were all like, what are you talking about? That's not a thing. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, so. So we don't know. Oh, that was the UK's problem yeah. was cloud gaming. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's possible they come back and say, hey, we will do this for yes. cloud gaming. Maybe that'll be a UK only thing. Maybe mm-hmm. they just won't have Game Pass in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's also possible they're blocked completely in the UK and then we get some weird bullshit like, I don't know. Nintendo publishes their games in the yeah. UK. <laughs> I heard, I think, who was I watching? What the hell's his name? This Mac YouTuber. God, he was talking about gaming on a Mac. Um, Snazzy Labs. He was talking about how there are more Nintendo Switches than there are Macs. I believe it, honestly. Because, yeah. like... Or I get, I guess... Nintendo Switch is from 2017 and on versus Max. Like, like Max sales, I guess. Yeah. I mean... Max sales since then versus Nintendo Switch sales since then. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, Switches are cheaper. They're more mass market. You know, they're more for the common man, whereas Max, they're expensive as hell. You know, they're really only for, like, a select group of people. You know, Apple really only markets it to, like, designers and developers and, like, graphic artists and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they they have like a line that markets to everyone, but those are still expensive too. Yeah. Um, especially when like PCs are so much cheaper. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting because I I do th- I mean there is a wider market for general purpose computers yeah. than there is for gaming, but I guess Nintendo hits 
that market so broadly. They hit the gaming market so wide. Yeah. Or they try to, at least. I guess every other every other console that Nintendo releases, they try to shotgun blast as wide yeah. as they can. All right. So, it looks like it's happening. It looks like the yeah. FTC is letting it go through, and it might be weird and wacky the way that it gets pushed through, but it looks like Microsoft's going to yeah, own Activision. That's it. And then you're going to get Call of Duty and Game Pass. Hopefully, Call of Duty gets better. Yeah. Hopefully, we get more stuff in our Game Pass yeah. that I'm already paying for. Hopefully, it forces Sony to make their service better. Yeah. And hopefully, we get Tony Hawk 3 and 4. That's really what I'm waiting for. And hopefully, we get yeah. Tony Hawk 3 and 4. How many Max does Bob have? One. Two. That's my old one. Over there. Yeah. One. Really. And then another one. So, maybe two. <laughs> Um, how many switches does Bob have? Oh God, I have like nineteen. <laughs> Enough to have bought a fully kitted out Mac. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I think I have five or six switches. So, so three times the amount of yeah Macs that I have. There's a lot of things here that I need to yeah maybe sell and get rid of. Um. Anyway, we will move on to the other very important news. Like, for example, Capcom. Capcom's got some Mega Man news. Oh, boy. Capcom is considering how to approach making new Mega Man games. Uh, While a number of retro compilations of older Mega Man titles have been released in recent years, like we've said, uh, entirely new entries in the series are few and far between. The releases of Mega Man 9 in, 20, in 2008 and Mega Man 10 in 2010 and Mega Man 11 in 2018 have marked the only major Mega Man games in the past 15 years. I have to do. I have to look at this with my eyes. 9 and 10 were like the same. Yeah. And then 11 was bad. Yeah. I really hated 11. Yeah, I didn't like it 11 It felt like a much. Flash game. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. Yeah, eleven came three, out in twenty eighteen. Three games in fifteen years. When was the last X game? Because I only really care about Mega Man. X. That was the PS two era. Yeah, that was X eight. X eight. Yeah, that's fucked up. Uh, during a Q and A session following its latest annual meeting of shareholders, one shareholder pointed out that the late latest retro compilation, uh, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection has sold more than 1 million copies since it uh, was released in April. Suggesting that this may have contributed to user expansion, the shareholder asked what Capcom's plans were for the Mega Man series going forward. Including Mega Man 11, the latest entry in the franchise, Mega Man is one of Capcom's historic IPs and is loved by fans, and as such, we want to take care of how we develop the series, uh, Capcom replied. We are considering how to approach the production of a new entry in the series, which requires numerous factors, including the development of of a solid concept, ideas, and gameplay, etc. When asked to specify about more ports or retro compilations, uh, it added, we are considering our approach to ports of past entry titles, uh, which includes addressing technical issues. According to Capcom's own internal data, the Mega Man series has sold more than 38 million units over its 36-year history. This makes it one of the company's best-selling series, just, uh, just behind Street Fighter at 49 million, Monster Hunter at 92 million and Resident Evil at 142 million. So it's the fourth best selling. It's the fourth best selling franchise in Capcom's library, yes. So what the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing, man? It's been so long. Yeah. That really pisses me off because it's, 2018 was the last Mega Man game. It's been so long and they keep doing the same things with Mega Man. Yeah. They're always side scrolling uh jump and shoot games. So so Mega Man 11 was the last one it was 2018 and it was developed very half assed. It yeah. looked it looked horrible and it played very bad. It just it felt like they put like a B team on it. Why? Yeah. It's the fourth best selling franchise that you have. Mm -hmm. Do a better job. But also, yeah, you're right though. They're they haven't really transitioned it into any other thing. Like they haven't pivoted it. Like even Street Fighter got 3D. Uh, yeah, you know, Street Fighter got you know it became 3D and it, it like Street Fighter Six had a fucking open world section 
in we, it. Like we're seeing, we 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 saw these like uh, uh, development ideas and and fan games and stuff of Mega Man, like a Metroid Prime type thing. Yeah, and they haven't done it. Why? I mean, I do understand you want to like you know do the right thing by this series, but I think Mega Man does need some sort of reinvention. You yeah. can't just do. You can't just do Mega Man 12. The next Mega Man game needs to be something new. It needs to be, you know, what Mega Man X was to the original Mega Man, you know? And every time they start a new franchise with Mega Man, it seems to me like it's incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. Start with Mega Man, then you got X. Then you got uh, uh, Battle Battle Network. Network. Uh, You got... uh, uh, Legends. Legends. So, so that's the th- that's another thing. So, so all of those collections that they've released have been very successful for them too. Mm-hmm. I think I heard that the Battle Network collection was the best selling of all of the collections. They said it sell- sold a million copies. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. The only one left is Legends. Yeah, that's the only other collection they could possibly make, which which they desperately need because yeah. people want that so bad. Mm-hmm. Um, fucking make a legends three because legends was the most different of all of yeah. them and that was the most uh i guess it was the most it, ambitious it's the most ambitious and it's the closest you can get to a modern mega man type yeah. game uh legends three would be the farthest push you can take mega man yeah and like fucking do that dude you're doing it with resident evil yeah like every resident evil game every you know every time resident evil starts to get stagnant they stop and they completely reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You know, and it works out great for them until they run into the ground and then they have to reinvent <laughs> the wheel again. But, you know, they do it. They do it with Street Fighter. They do it with Monster Hunter. Yeah. So. And, sh- and and I love Mega Man for its 2D jump and shoot. Right. So I don't want to forget that. Like, right. I want another Mega Man well, X. What is Mega Man? It's jump and it, shoot. It's a platform. It's a platform game with shooting elements where the main hook is you can gain abilities from the bosses you defeat. And it's, you know, you have to defeat this boss to take out this boss and vice versa and on and on and on. Yeah. So, yeah, something like, you know, honestly, you know, I think about it. Arkham Origin kind of did that because every boss you beat, you gain an ability that would like help you with the next boss. Yeah. Now, if if you wanted to do like what Mega Man did. You know, because you could do it in any order. It would have to be more open than what Arkham City was. But, like, you know, that's a step in that direction. I think Mega Man can be more broad than that. Because Mega Man X and regular Mega Man, you gain the abilities from the bosses you fight. But in, like, Zero, you just gain abilities kind of throughout the game like yeah. there's a lot of bosses but you don't necessarily gain an ability from them you mm-hmm. just they're just really cool boss yeah. fights so i don't think the gaining an ability is absolutely essential for mega man i just think that if you want to boil it down to its core elements it's j- jump and shoot game and there's some abilities in it that mm-hmm. you gain over time uh it's level based there's usually there, i don't think any of them are metroidvania type games no so they're level based you can play any level in any order and uh that's it there's some elemental damage elements to the game mm-hmm. otherwise that's the game it's very simple and i want that like i i love zero and x i would love new versions of those games new, new mm-hmm. entries in those games but i think that if it's the fourth best selling franchise that you got just put a bunch of money into making a big triple a mega yeah. man game don't give me another mega man 11 half-assed bullshit yeah I'll say that the last Mega Man game to have been released is a game called Mega Man X Dive, which I keep seeing like tweets about. Okay. Uh, it came out in 2020. I don't think it came out in America. Uh, it is a mobile game, but it looks pretty cool. Okay. How do I explain this? It's, it looks like it's on Steam. Okay. Can I get it? I kind of want to play it. Buy game, free to play. Is there a description uh, about this game? Here we go. Uh, it looks like a collection of all Mega Man X games thrown together, and you play as different characters and stuff. Uh, Mega Man X Dive, also known as Rockman X Dive, uh, is an action platforming uh, video game in the Mega Man X series. Uh, the game stars the player themselves as they use hunter programs to help the newcomers uh, Rico and Via. 
uh, fight glitches in a data vast database of Mega Man X data known as the Deep Log. Doesn't really tell you much. <laughs> Early access for the global version published by Blah 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 was released on the twenty uh, on June thirtieth, twenty twenty one, in the United States and United Kingdom. Okay, uh, so it is available on iOS, Android, and Steam. Okay, scheduled to end its online service in September. <laughs> okay. With an official offline version titled Mega Man X Dive Offline, releasing later that same year. Okay, so there's another another reason. Yeah, we need games preservation. <laughs> uh, where's the gameplay? Gameplay. It's a 2D action platform made with a modified engine from the Mega Man X Maverick Hunter. Remember that game? Yes. While the gameplay is largely similar to that of a typical side-scrolling Mega Man game, certain aspects are changed in that the player can attack enemies from all angles with an optional automatic aim system, similar to that of Mega Man X7. Enemies don't drop any recovery items, and rather than a character using their own primary weapons, along with Maverick and Robot Master special weapons, one has a primary weapon and a secondary weapon ranging from Buster's blah, 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 blah. A single stage from the mainline game is split up into five different levels with a boss at the end of each each of them. The highway stage from Mega Man X is split up into five chapters. What the fuck? <laughs> each level co- completion will reward players stars. Okay, I'm going to download this game. All right, just do it. it. I thought it was only available in, in other countries. I was going to fucking try to get a Japanese version or something. Uh, I'm going on the App Store right now. Anyway, thank you to Luabic with 22 months. I keep seeing on my feed that there might be a classic, a class action lawsuit against Steam. Hmm. Do you know what this is about? No. No. Should I sign up so I can maybe get six dollars out of the settlement? Yes. I don't know. Yes. So just sign up because you, you know you could get for a free six dollars. This is the first I'm hearing of it. I see. I uh, I'm getting Mega Man X Dive. It's on my phone. Steam class action lawsuit. That's a scam. Oh, Kjack says it's a scam. Okay. And then Lord CD says it's a scam lawsuit. Okay. Then, Unable to install. Not enough storage. Okay. Oh, but. How much storage do I need? Uh, Luabix says I really like to get the Battle Network collection because one of them is the game I might have sank the most time into on hmm. the GBASP. But the fact that it's a collection turns me off because I know I don't love it enough to try and play them all. <gasps> I feel that, but I definitely uh, will will buy a collection just for one of the games. Yeah, because the collections are usually pretty cheap. I'm pretty sure this is like twenty bucks. Yeah, and I mean, like the collection will always go on sale. So if that, if you know that's a concern you just wait till a sale yeah buy it when it's on sale oh my god it's 50 bucks oh fuck then yeah that's a lot that's a lot for one that's a lot for a gba game i'd pay 20 bucks for for one gba game for sure but no that's way too much what apps don't i need tiktok takes a lot mario kart get get out of here dude i don't need mario kart on my phone I, I did a small purge of apps on my phone. It felt so good. Just getting rid of apps. I got a lot of pictures. I got to delete my pictures. They all I, sync to Dropbox. I finally just like bit the bullet and bought a iCloud account because like... I feel like it'd make my life a lot easier it if would, I just got an iCloud account. But especially because my wife has like no joke. She makes pictures. iCloud albums for, yeah. for everything. Yeah. And so guess what? That means Willie had to buy the two terabyte uh, storage <laughs> plan. It's ten dollars a month. It just goes to save pictures of our kids. I just, I just don't like how much they try to shove, uh, iCloud down your throat. Yeah, can't I? I, I like it's a the principle of the thing right now. I, I yeah, but sometimes you know you just gotta like throw your principles out the window. I know. No, <laughs> to I make know. Your life easier. Believe it or not, harvesting all your data through TikTok does take up a lot of space on your phone. I believe it. I believe it. People are like all concerned. They're like, "Oh, Threads is gonna steal your data." Oh my god, that gets it's, me so mad. Like, I have Instagram, it's man. Facebook. It's too late. They already have your data. It's too late, yeah. dude. If you don't have Facebook and you don't have Instagram, fine. That's fine. Yeah. Continue to not engage with Meta. That's fine. Yeah. It's too late for me. Just take it already. I, I don't care. I don't care if they know my browser history. Like, I kind of like. 
like my brain like cracks like glass every time I hear someone say, I hate Facebook. I hate everything about, about Facebook. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use Instagram. <laughs> just, my, my brain literally just like cracks like glass every time I hear someone say that. I, <laughs> it was empty. To be honest, though, I agree. Yeah. I also don't like Facebook. I mean, but Instagram's relatively fun. As an app, yes. But yes. if you don't like it because of like the data harvesting yes. and the data collection and like the, the scummy people who are on it, like guess what <laughs> yeah it's not going anywhere yeah all right uh let's talk about the last of us knockoff what is this there's a lot of crap on the switch there is but uh the last of us is on the switch yo that looks Asterisk. horrible <laughs> Uh, the Last of Us and a sequel are blockbuster action video games with incredible graphics and deep narratives. They are also games that, for a few different reasons, will never officially be uh, never officially be playable on the Switch. But don't worry, you can just play The Last Hope, Dead Zone Survival instead. A new game on the East Shop that looks an awful lot like Naughty Dog's post-apocalyptic series. Released on June 30th, The Last Hope, Dead Zone Survival is a third-person action game starring a man named Brian Lee who was sent uh, to the future as part of an unspecified government's investigation into the deadly zombie outbreak. Apparently his job is to figure out why it happened or maybe to stop it. The trailer isn't clear. Um, what is clear is that pretty quickly, Brian Lee encounters a young girl who is totally not a ripoff of Ellie from the last of us. <laughs> yes. She's wearing the same outfit as Ellie and looks a lot like Ellie and appears to follow Brian Lee around for safety from the undead, but she's totally different in every other way. <laughs> Uh, the similarities between The Last Hope and The Last of Us extend beyond the similar names, characters, and zombies. A quick glance at the game's official digital cover image makes it clear that uh, what the game developers at VG Games are likely are were likely, let's say, inspired by when making the Switch title. Uh, according to the game's official eShop description, <laughs> The Last Hope features an immersive atmosphere that is enhanced by detailed visuals, eerie sound design, and a gripping storyline. Um, this is the part where the writer included some gameplay while at, while asking you to reread the previous sentence. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the gameplay. It's certainly interesting. Yep. Uh, as of July 5th, The Last Hope has yet to launch in North America. The Switch exclusive, the Switch exclusive action game is currently only available in the UK. It's normally nine pounds, but it's currently on sale for ninety nine. Uh, there you for, go. Uh, ninety nine pence. What a bargain. Uh, you might be better off just watching the TV show of The Last of Us instead. They're not doing themselves any favors with up. Oh, they're not doing themselves any favors with the with the poster there. Yeah, like that's just Ellie. That's just The Last of Us. That is that is literally just Ellie. Also, you know how Ellie like helps you out in the game. Yeah. In this, when you start shooting, she just goes, she just covers up. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, don't get this game. That looks yeah. uh, don't don't get fooled. The last hey guys, public service announcement: The Last of Us is not currently on. No, The, the Last of Us is a PlayStation exclusive series that is also on PC. Mm -hmm. But apparently, the PC version sucks. Hopefully, it's gotten better by I now. I think it has, but I mean, don't play games on PC. Is what we're trying to say. <laughs> no, PCs are for losers. Yeah, even though that's what I play all my games on now. <laughs> all right, last news: Black Panther yes. game. Yes, this was a surprise. Uh, is this a screenshot from the game or is no, this something else? That's a screenshot from the uh, oh. Square Enix Avengers game. Okay. Uh, Marvel's Black Panther is getting a dedicated action adventure game, and EA is creating it. Uh, the publisher on Monday announced that Cliffhanger Games is developing the currently untitled Black Panther adventure in collaboration with Marvel Games. The Seattle based Cliffhanger is led by Kevin Stevens. Formerly the studio head of Monolith Productions, makers of Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Shadow of War, and has developers with tenure at on the Halo, God of War, and Call of Duty series. Uh, we are dedicated to delivering fans a definitive and authentic Black Panther experience, giving them more agency and control over their narrative than uh, they have ever experienced in a story-driven video game, uh, Steven said in a statement. Wakanda is a rich superhero sandbox, and our mission is to develop an epic world for players who love Black Panther and want to explore the world of Wakanda as much as we do. Uh, this is not the same project announced last September, starring Black Panther and Captain America in a World War II adventure. That project is under Marvel Games and Skydance New Media and is led by Amy Henning, uh, formerly the Uncharted series creative director. 
Uh, Black Panther will be the second of three games EA has in the works under the agreement with Marvel. One is still unannounced. The other is a single-player Iron Man action-adventure title, currently development at EA Motive. I forgot all about that game. Mm-hmm. That project is led by uh, Oliver Prolix, uh, who is the senior producer for Square Enix uh, for Eidos Montreal's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and left that studio shortly before Square Enix sold it off uh, to Embracer Group. EA has not announced platforms or a launch window for Black Panther. I'm hoping that EA learned their lesson from the deal that they had with uh, Lucas Arts yes. or, or, or Disney. Yeah, because for Star Wars. When yeah. Disney bought all of the Star Wars rights, they closed down Lucas Arts, the game well, studio. Lucasfilm closed down Lucas Arts before that. Okay. And then they signed, they were looking for a de- uh, game developer to make Star Wars games, and they signed a 10 year exclusive deal with EA. Did they finish the 10 years? Yeah. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. Because they squandered that deal. And yeah. now uh, everyone's allowed to make Star Wars games. Yeah. yeah. If you have the license. But uh, they had a lot of cool things in, in the works, like Battlefront and all that stuff. And they fucked it all up. Yeah. So and just like EA does with a lot of stuff. So now they have the the license for a lot of cool Marvel stuff. Let's hope that they yeah. deliver. Um, they have said that this will be an original third-person single-player game. Mm-hmm. So that's a good start. The big fear, of course, is that this is EA, and yes. they will find a way to EA this. Yes. <laughs> Microtransactions, um, always online, uh, unnecessary DLC, you know, all that wonderful crap that has infested modern games so i have questions about the uh captain america world war ii game yeah I've it heard... looks like there's four players yeah oh, there's four people that you can play as mm-hmm. captain america black panther I... one of the women from black panther uh and one, of, and one of the guys from captain america from captain america with the trumpet <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot who those people were. Now, does this take place between time periods? Does it take place in World War II? And is this the Black Panther of that time period? I think it's the Black Panther of that time period. And now, does this mean that Wakanda has made themselves known to the world? Because wasn't Wakanda, like, secret until Wakanda, recent years? If my memory serves correctly, Wakanda like was known to the world, but their advances in technology were not. Okay. They they had the front that they were like a, a smaller nation rather than the like global economic powerhouse that they actually were. Okay. Um at least that was that's uh my understanding of okay. it. Um yeah, the the Captain America Black Panther game will feature the a previous Black Panther. Oh no, the Captain America and Black Panther, the T'Challa version. Oh no, stop. Sorry, sorry. Okay, it's talking about, okay. it's talking about Marvel's Avengers. Uh, this game will feature T'Challa's ancestor. Okay, good. So. Okay, that's cool. I I'm interested in that. Yeah, that sounds like a cool. That sounds thing like thing to do. Yeah. Uh, a straight Black Panther game. I don't know what that would be though. You know, like wh- as opposed to a gay Black Panther game. <laughs> Oh, that game would just be fabulous. <laughs> no, like, what would a Black Panther game look like that isn't just our Spider-Man. Game? Yeah. Spider-Man, <laughs> but it's Black Panther. Okay. So, and that'd be great. That'd yeah, be cool. Yeah. That'd be really cool. They're also making a Wolverine game. Not, yes. not EA. Uh, uh, Insomniac. Insomniac yeah. is. I'm interested in that. Yeah. But, like, we've seen Wolverine games before, so, like, I have an idea of what that could be. Like Black and they've Pan- been great. Yeah. So. But, like, Black Panther is, like, an international character. Like, he's the king of a nation and often has to do a lot of diplomacy in other nations. So yeah, I don't think this is going to be an open world game. It's definitely going to be a, a linear level by level game. I think it's going to be an open world game. No, I know. would like for it to be a linear level by level game. I think, I think it's going to be an open world. I game. think it would be cool if Wakanda was open you can explore yeah. that like a hub world, like Peach's castle. And like you go up to different people and make a single missions. Mm-hmm. But, and I agree with you, a level by level game would be much more suited for Black Panther. Mm-hmm. But they think everything's going to be out of the open world. Because they tried to make Star Wars Ragtag open world and that like crushed Visceral. W- what the hell is Star Wars Ragtag? You remember? Remember Visceral games? 
They're working on a Star Wars. They were working on a Star Wars game with Amy Henning. And like Oh, and then this never came out. This never came out. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was codenamed Ragtag. Hello, Wood, we're being raided. Oh no! Everybody, how you doing? The Australians are coming. The Australians are coming. I need more info about Star Wars Ragtag. There was a lot of Star Wars projects that got closed. Yes. This was pretty recent though. It was supposed to come out before Jedi Fallen Order. Oh. Yeah. And I just kept getting delayed because, like, that was one of those games, like, EA told them you have to make this in the, the Frostbite engine. Oh, yeah. And then it and just like, fell apart. Yeah. So this was being run by Amy Henning. And now what's she working on? She's working on something else. She's, work, she's working on the World War II Black Panther Captain America. Right, game. right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, thank you. I lost my Steam Stream Labs. Thank you to Red Sophone for the nine months. Happy anniversary. Happy happy nine months. As much as I didn't like the game, Square Enix Avengers take on Black Panther was pretty neat and could work on its own. I think yeah. there was I didn't play it, but didn't you see that there were uh some good ideas in the uh avengers game there were yeah there were a lot of good ideas in there mm-hmm. the problem was it was at some point square enix it had to have been square enix said make this destiny yeah and like it does like you can't just make destiny and yeah you I can't remember, really do that with the avengers either we remember when the game was coming out it was very confusing yeah it was very confusing what the game was even going to be yeah I guess that's all the news. Yeah, that that's was it. it. There's not, not much. To like happen. we said, not a lot happened this week. But what did happen was the I I, I, I don't I don't have uh, unboxing. Oh, we unboxing! Have... Yeah, there unboxing. we go. Unboxing! Yeah, look at that. Look at this. This came through the PO box a while ago, and mm-hmm. I forgot about it. Oh. And uh, we got to open it. Yeah. This is we got a little note. All right. This is from part-time cad it says bob i just wanted to reach out and say thanks for reviewing a couple of my case designs on your youtube channel there's a video on the youtube channel where i talk about uh accessories and mods you can do to portable emulation devices uh i've actually followed your channel and retro handhelds in general for a while so it was a huge compliment i wanted to send you a couple of my latest designs for the miu mini plus as well as the ambernick rg35xx as a sort of thank you for the shout out i know you mentioned on your channel that you recently got your own 3d printer and both these designs are available for free on printables as well so if you decide you want a different color feel free to give the stls a download and print them up thanks again for the channel great love you Mwah, kisses he put kisses in here thank you part-time cat what do we get here's one that's a case oh this is okay so i have one of these for the mini mm-hmm. the regular mini oh, and this really one is a nice per- print oh this is different this is the uh rg350 xx so this one is a case for the mini plus mm-hmm. you when you want to play you slot it in this way and then you play it that way gotcha and that i don't know what that is. this is for the amber neck i Let can't get it open gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, oh there you go i did it i'm so good oh just a case yeah just a case cool oh and the back i guess that's for the shoulder buttons yeah and it's got a little felt in it very cool very nice yeah. i like it and you can print it yourself if you wanted to thank you part-time cat these are good prints it's by resin or just really which is really accurate. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh. Anyway. Oh shit. I guess I should pull <laughs> up a tweet. You know what the problem? Is? Maybe we should do a threads of the week because oh. you know. Uh. Tw- I haven't. I honestly haven't been on Twitter that much. Well, yeah, because you keep getting limited. Yeah. Well, actually, I haven't gotten limited in a while. Yeah. So I feel good about that. You know what? We're gonna do this one that I that I saw today. Okay. There you go. Twitter the week! Twitter the week! Twitter the week! This is by Secret Frank. It's actually, you know what? This is an old tweet, I think. I don't even know if it was from this week. Oh, no. July 10th. Okay. Uh, it's by Secret Frank. He quote tweeted somebody who said, How can she respect you if you talk, if you talk tough, but then lean into her? <laughs> I've seen this before where like you're a beta male if you take yeah. a picture with your girlfriend and you lean to her and she's doesn't lean to you she's supposed to be leaning to right, you right. if you want 
to have a uh, a, a good dynamic in the relationship. Yeah, she's, yeah. You you're supposed to stand stoic, and she's supposed to lean into you. Yeah. Don't give in to these women, <laughs> and lean towards them. Right. And this guy quote tweeted it, and said he green lined the dog. <laughs> Because he drew lines to yeah. show that there's an angle, and the dog is very straight. So. Uh, it's funny because Jonah Hill is an abusive monster, allegedly. What's that have to do with this? Oh, that's Jonah Hill. Yeah, I didn't even realize it's Jonah Hill. <laughs> I I I saw the, yeah, the, it, the tweets that Jonah Hill actually. I saw like I saw the tweet that screenshotted the text that Jonah Hill sent, and I yeah. there was a laundry list of stuff. I saw the first one, and I was like, I get it. Also, who's surprised? <laughs> like, I don't need to read the rest. I mean, yeah, he he kind of turned into like visually the guy who would do stuff like that. True. <laughs> yeah. So very true. Anyway, how you doing? We need yeah. a threads of the week. All right, we gotta need a oh, sound clip of you yelling threads of the week. All right. I guess until then we'll. Uh, oh yeah. We'll talk to you guys. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Yeah. Like Jordan Rand, who says, my favorite Wolfden era. You guys haven't lost a single step. I'm watching. Wait, what? You, my favorite Wolfden era. You guys haven't lost a single step. I'm watching nine-year-old in the Wolfden videos. And I, I'm still more interested in your opinions on the Force Awakens leaks from 2014 than I am about most other content on YouTube today. I especially appreciate the respect you guys have for each other when arguing about whether Japanese manga should be flipped for us dumb Americans. <laughs> what was... I wonder who... I wonder what the... What rumor there was? No, or... no, no, no. Like, I don't remember my stance on manga being flipped or not. So my stance was, if you're going to translate manga for the English language, then to me, that that entails translating it completely, meaning that if we, if in English we read from left to right, the book needs to go from left to right. And that would entail flipping the artwork. No, suck it up. Read it, read it right to left. <laughs> See, that's, Pussy. What, that's what the argument was. <laughs> I was watching Sesame Street with my son and the episode was about books and uh, Elmo Smartphone says, there are all kinds of books, picture books, chapter books, comic books. And I yelled in front of my son, that's manga. <laughs> that's a manga, son. So I threw the Apple TV out the window and I just took him downstairs and, that, and these are comic books. And now books. he's never allowed to watch Sesame <laughs> yes. Street again. Uh, insert original name here. It says, hey, Wolf Den Bros. Love the podcast. Question, since the podcast is recorded on the 4th of July, a holiday, how do you handle work-life balance? We don't. Uh, it poorly. sucks. Yes, that's the secret of every YouTube channel. Uh, they, they have no work-life balance. It's True. all work. True. Hey, all I'm taking time. a little bit of a break this week to do more work. Yeah, see? That's how we handle it yeah. around here. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you. <laughs> Cats on uh, the gaming says for the algorithm. Thank, thanks, yes. dude. Thanks, Fred, for including that one <laughs> for the algorithm. Steamed Yam says Tears of the Kingdom's voice acting is god awful. As soon as I got control of Link, I changed it to Japanese, and it's literally <laughs> perfect. I think it might be. I, I mean, I haven't played it. I've I always, know. I haven't played it any more than I have already. So I've always been weary of the idea of like when people say like the acting is better in like the Japanese voice track. I think it is. I I've heard the Japanese voice. But like how would you better. know if you don't speak Japanese? It's that's my, un, that's my question. Like, yeah, I understand like inflections and like tone. It's that and style, but like there, like there's inflections and tones are different from ours. Like, yeah, when somebody's yelling, obviously they're angry. So, so but, I think a good example is the Japanese dub of Akira. Okay. is bad right i don't like it compared to the american one and the reason is uh there are two emotions mm -hmm. there's either screaming or 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 just regular like like Conversate, robotic yeah. talking and, and it's it sounds like there's no it just it's just like emotionless talking no. or screaming there's no in between right and uh 
in with with Zelda Japanese, it sounds like there's a lot going on. Right. And it's like believable, you know. Okay. It doesn't sound like like even though I don't understand the. I don't understand enough Japanese to know what the hell is going on in the uh, Japanese dub of Akira. Um, I can tell that it's just flat, you yeah. know? Anyway. User OG whatever says, Bob, I need a controller for both Switch and Steam Deck. Any recommendations? 8-bit do, right? Yeah, the, the ultimate controller. Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's really cool because it comes with a dock. And there's a 2.4 gigahertz dongle in the dock. Yes. And, and it's also can, Bluetooth. And it's also Bluetooth. And there's a switch on the back. Yeah. So you can connect it to your switch via Bluetooth and the Steam Deck via a dongle or the other way around. Mm -hmm. And then you can just flip the switch on the back to go between the different consoles. Yes. All right. Uh, that's it. Now we're in the chat. How you doing? How you doing? How you living? Uh... Medicine just says Canada. <laughs> get it? That, I get that's, it. That's, that's Akira. That's an Akira reference. One of the English dubs calls him Akira, and it bothered me because when my friend handed me his VHS of it, he kept calling it Akira, and I was like, "Which is it?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to handle uh, 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 pronunciation yeah. issues because I've always called it Akira. Yeah. But it is Akira. Right. So I'm just not, you know. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not going to Taco Bell going, can I have a burrito? Yeah. You know, I'm going to give me a burrito. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Did you hear about go ahead. about Riguma? Yes. Yes, I did. Hear about what? Riguma. You know what Riguma is? No. Riguma Baruzu. <laughs> There was nice. a tweet. It was a tweet that said, uh, um, "the the Japanese Splatoon teams are shortening the name of like the competitive scene to Liguma for, yeah. for some reason." And somebody goes, "What's Ligma?" And then they said, "Liguma, <laughs> my ball to zoo." And then it's a picture of uh, 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 Doctor Manhattan vaporizing. Oh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Russia. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that should have been the tweet of the week. There you go. I was looking for that because I wanted to send it to Wood now that he's learning Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, have, I have it on here, yeah. Baruzu. Oh, God, uh, anyway. Got good... any games you're looking forward to releasing within the next year? No. I'm trying to think. When's Metal Gear come out? Next year, I think. That's an example of doing it right because they are releasing Metal Gear Solid 3, the original version, in the master collection and they're doing a remake true so uh 2024 okay yeah that'll be interesting how that gets done because you know are people gonna just buy the collection to get like a bunch of games for the price of one or are they gonna wait for you know the remake and get that instead the remake will sell more you think so yes because it'll be a much bigger deal right uh i'll be getting both of course. Sure, a lot of people here are going to be getting both. Mm -hmm. League match is what the competitive uh, scene in Splatoon is. Right. League match. So mm -hmm. they shortened it to League. Uh, league Ma they shortened it to. So League right. Ma. I gotcha. I am following along. When are you going to go to Japan? Is it this year? Yes, it's this year. Um. What else? Generic question, but what are you guys playing? I'm playing Castlevania on this Game Boy. I I have not played Resident Evil 4 Remake in a while. I haven't had time to go to it, but in my spare time, I have been playing Metroid Zero Mission. And I think I'm close to Mother Brain. <laughs> Like, I got to a point where, like, now I finally, like, encounter the Metroids. And let me tell you, now the game is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I want to... 
I've always wanted. I've never beaten Mega Man Legends. I liked it a lot, yeah. And I've replayed it a couple times over the years, but I've never beaten it. And that's yeah. part of why I had this like the vendetta where I wanted to get my save file ported from my actual N sixty four over to something, something physical, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to replay the three hours that I played. But it's only three hours. I should just mm-hmm. fucking replay it. Yeah, get it over with. Did you see the speed run of the original Luigi's Mansion demo? It's the full game, but resets at the 20 minute mark. Oh my God. Jeez. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. I did not see that. What's your favorite PS Vita game? Uh, Tearaway. Peace Walker, the PSP game. Right. <laughs> no, Tearaway was great. It's like the only game that used all the stupid novelty stuff of the Vita well. So I also really like Gravity Rush. Gravity Rush. Gravity is Rush is good. The Uncharted game on there was very good. Golden Abyss, that mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. And it's on the PS4, but I played it on the Vita. Uh, the Sly Cooper game, Thieves in Time. Oh, yeah. I've never played a Sly Cooper game. I really like that one. That was fun. Nico Mosso, thank you for the 19 months. I'm Japanese. Sadly, I've never been there. To Hopefully, Japan? Hopefully, <laughs> one day I will. Yeah, go. Yeah. Simply go. I really need Sega to stop freaking fucking around and give us shadow the hedgehog remastered no 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 no. that that game can be lost to time is there anything you're gonna hunt for when you're in japan i don't know retro games are still expensive there yeah like it's it's not helpful i mean you can find famicom versions of games cheaper than over here because they made more of them over there yeah but but they're the japanese versions right uh yeah, I don't know. It's a different... Retro games in Japan are cheap end consoles. Not really. Not really. I mean, they might be cheaper compared to what we pay here, but they still might be expensive in terms of, like, what they should be over there, you know? I... When I went, they everything was fucking expensive. Right. And, and even the games... I found stuff would be cheaper if i bought it on ebay and just got it shipped to my house in america so okay. like i was i was very not impressed although i do want to go there are retro game stores in like kyoto that apparently akihabara could be like a tourist trap yeah uh did you see uh sega is going to partner with another company to make blockchain games i heard the opposite that Sega was no longer going to get into blockchain games because they're not cool anymore. Yeah, wasn't that... Did they make a statement saying we're not doing yeah. blockchain? Let me just double check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure. Maybe they went back on it. Maybe. Please do vlogs in Japan, Bob. Uh, I'll do my best. I don't know how much I can do because I also want to enjoy my trip. <laughs> yeah, uh, Japanese gaming giant Sega to pull support from boring blockchain games. Pull support. Yeah. Good. So they're not gonna not gonna do blockchain games. Good. Good. Good for Sega. Yeah. All right. I think we're I think we're done here. Okay. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, shame on you. But we always put the show up on an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, shame on you. But we're also an audio podcast <laughs> on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, uh, and all other fine audio podcast services. But no matter how you listen to this show, folks, Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. And if you don't, how dare you? I just got an article from KJack in the chat. It is a uh, Sega Greenlight's blockchain game based on immensely popular franchise from July 10th. I literally just Google Sega blockchain and all the first ones say like, is pulling support as reported by venture beat the two companies have agreed to create a web three title for the blockchain gaming platform game Dosi. Is that what they pulled support of? Who's got the newer article? Uh, hold on. Push Square. Two days ago. This uh, was one day ago. Sega, once intrigued by the power of the blockchain, appears to have changed course as the company's COO, Suji Utsumi, declared that the action in uh, play-to-earn games is boring. What's the point of games if there's no fun? Speaking to Bloomberg... Okay, so Bloomberg is the main article. 
Uh, Utsumi said that Sega doesn't want to devalue the strength of its biggest IPs like Sonic the Hedgehog by allowing them to be used in third-party blockchain games. The executive went on to cast doubt on whether the prolific publisher would implement Web3 tech in future projects as well, stating we're looking into whether this technology is really going to take off in the industry after all. And they quote that in this article. So there's okay. literally just conflicting reports on whether or not they're doing blockchain stuff. Okay. I am leaning towards that they're not. Who, what website is that? As reported by Venture Beats, the two companies have agreed to create Web3 stuff. Okay. Line and Next Signals deal with Sega. Was this also July 10th? Line and Next. Hmm. I'm. I. I don't. I. Did, that's crazy. Yeah. That back to back days, we got two conflicting things happening. Interesting. Well, hopefully this doesn't go through. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here, guys. We're gonna raid Jackson. Everybody, go say hello to him. He is playing Mario Kart. Hey, he even plays with viewers. You can play with him. Uh, so yeah, do that. I'm not gonna have a video this week. Uh, I got YouTube Shorts. Go watch those. Uh, I will probably be streaming a lot here on Twitch. So come say hi. Uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.